Let's get that team rocket. Dragonite Hyper Beam! Oof, that's rough. What took you, Dio Gen Z? Just as I thought, that strange radio signal is coming from here. Oh, this is the Pokemon Crystal walkthrough, by the way. The stairs are right here. Dio Gen Z, we should split up to check this place. I'll go first. Arg, you found the secret stairway. What do you have to say? I'm surprised you're not dead, splattered all over the walls. That guy's Dragonite Pokemon or Dragon Pokemon are tough. Yes, yeah, so we are in the Manahog Manahogany, Manahogany. No, it's Mahogany Town. Rockets hideout. And intruder alert! Intruder alert! These battles will be cut. Yeah. You see, right now you don't know it, but we are actually stuck in a trap. Those Persian statues, these things right here, they're actually cameras. Yeah, their eyes are oddly shiny because they're optical cameras looking out for any intruders like us. And every time you pass through one of them, it alerts a Team Rocket grunt to attack you. Their main roster of fighters consists of Zubats, Rattatas, sometimes Drowsies, it's really not exciting to see these battles, so that's why I just plain old cut them. Definitely not a matter of not enough time anymore. Go ahead, punk. Take one more step. We've got traps in the floors. Yeah, so if you keep going forward past him, who only had Rattatas, an extremely boring battle. If you go south past him, you're going to come across a floor that is oddly shaded. And that's where you'll find the wild Pokemon that you have seen in the beginning of this episode. That's why, where they are all concealed, except for one, and that's Electrode, but we'll be talking about him later. I'm actually deciding not to... Well, hold on. I am deciding not to flip off the switch to deactivate the alarm system, but if you go and activate, press A by the computer where that guy is standing next to, that will deactivate the traps, so you only have to go through, I think, one, really. It's all that it requires you to do. But, I want to go through all the traps, because the more traps, the merrier, and the more experience points I get. Plus, since I'm trying to evolve two Pokémon that are evolved based on happiness, that being Eevee and my Pichu, I want all the experience points I can get. Mostly the scientists, they'll have Voltorb sometimes. Often you can expect Magnemites. So be sure you have a fighting type with you, or maybe even a fire type. It's funny, I'm having my Pichu go through the trial of a hundred Team Rocket members. Well, not really, but a slew of Team Rocket members. It reminds me that I just finished Dead or Alive Dimensions, at least one mode of it, and that was the hundred matches in a row in survival mode with the toughest fighter level difficulty setting. That was crazy, and it's an awesome game too. If you're looking for a good fighting game, just as a side note, and you don't want to play Pokemon, because this fighting is just too RPG-ish for you, you want to be more hand-to-hand, -hand, foot to face combat, then check out Dead or Alive Dimensions on the 3DS, because it looks stunning. I'm not really a uh, fighter kind of guy until I played this game and realized that, wow, this is similar to Brawl, but not really. That's really the only fighting game that I cared for in the past was Smash Brothers, but Dead or Alive Dimensions is changing that. Yep, and you may be wondering, what was the difference? Why didn't I go for the Street Fighter 4 and instead Dead or Alive Dimensions? Did I have some sort of loyalty? Well, it was two things. One, Team Ninja designs Dead or Alive Dimensions, and Team Ninja is the designer of Metroid Other M. Remember, we're not going to activate that computer, but that's the one you press A to, A next to, and it will deactivate the traps. Uh, so they developed Metroid Other M, and they actually threw Ridley's stage in there. We actually haven't gotten to that part in the walkthrough. So, shit. Spoilers! Okay, well... I'll put an annotation, hopefully, hopefully I'll remember what point that was, to warn you if you don't want to see what happens next in Metroid Other M. But yes, there is Ridley, and yes, there is a battleground which you fight on 
to face him, and Team Ninja threw that into Dead or Alive Dimensions as a fight stage. And also secondly, I'm not ashamed to admit this at all, and I don't think I'm perverted at all. I'm a heterosexual sexual male who finds women attractive, and it definitely had to do with the 3D boobies. Yep, Dead or Alive Dimension has beautiful graphics all around. We'll just say that. But I am a Kasumi fanboy for sure. She won me over big time. Not to mention she has a great kicking ability. She does this sweeping rolling kick that knocks opponents out. Toot sweet. By the way, that warp pad will take you back to the begin beginning of this maze in case you need to heal up your Pokemon and you don't want to go through long trails of trap Pokemon or even go the long way around. Thankfully, Lance will be here on this occasion, but you can't expect him to be here. See, there he goes every time. So, take back the warp panel to go to the Pokemon Center. And we need passwords, damn it! Do you have the passwords? You rotten pest! Is that the password? I don't know. Team Rocket. I always thought it was awesome that Jesse and James had a different uniform. <laughs> Although they were kind of the black sheep, so to speak, of Team Rocket for doing that. Adding a little bit of originality to them. But, oh well. Team Rocket, at least Jesse and James, will never succeed. So long as good wins over evil in the anime world. I think that's why I really had to stop watching Pokemon, especially after they changed the voice actors. That was really the final nail in their coffin. I just couldn't stand the new voice actors, and it wasn't that intriguing of a storyline for my age, <laughs> quite frankly. But also, Team Rocket never wins, and it's disappointing. I want to see at least one time them get a little bit smarter. I'd like for Meowth to say, Hey guys, what if we just put a chloroform napkin over Ash's face when he's sleeping? This way we could snatch Pikachu no problem. And we could get all his other Pokemon. You know, that would be a very simple solution, but there is no such death in children's shows. Nor am I condoning the idea of changing it, but just saying I'd like to see Team Rocket win. But not this Team Rocket. This Team Rocket is a bunch of assholes. Forcing Pokemon to evolve? You do not know the way of the samurai! The way of training, the way of balance, and the way of strategy. That's ultimately why Team Rocket will always lose. Because they're just an organization of grunts. Run by other grunts that have slightly stronger Pokemon. But in the grand scheme of things, they know nothing about Pokemon battles. They know nothing about the ways and arts of EV training. Or the strategy involved in raising a good team. If you notice, most of these grunts only have two or three Pokemon, and they're all the same! I don't want to ruin any spoilers, but just telling you, the executives are not going to be that much different. They may have slightly far more evolved Pokemon of what their underlings have, but it's still essentially the same shit. Really, all you need is an Earthquake and Team Rocket's done, because most of their Pokemon are poison. For the minor Zubats are around that are around without a Thundershock. That's all you need. Yeah, the guy in the cape, incredibly tough. Hey, who is that pink-headed person up there? It's so funny. I always thought, and I think I've said this before, that the girl members of Team Rocket, when they had your back, their backs turned to you. Because the first time you see them is in Slowpoke Well. I thought they were carrying Slowpoke tails on their back. I didn't realize that was their long hair. Ah, but that's the bliss of Game Boy Color graphics. Leaves a little bit of room for imagination in there. Even though it's a pre-programmed game that has you do specific things. I oftentimes look longingly at patches of bush that look like they could be cut up and walked through to ac access some kind of legendary Pokemon area. I was like, damn, if I just had a bounce ability. But this was second generation, so that wasn't invented until fourth. But if I just could bounce over these bushes, I bet there would be some extra areas to explore. Thinking there would be like a hidden town or something. And then even more humorously, I would design hidden towns and stuff. I would 
draw a rough sketch of, say, Cherry Grove City. And actually, it's pretty cool now that I think of it because they did kind of expand outwards north of Cherry Grove City. They let you explore that pond region, which if you go back in the second generation, you see that there's a body of water there, but you have no access to it. So I think that's pretty cool that they let you do that in the remakes. But I would go far past just letting you access a little pond. It would be access a little pond, go past that path. Talk to slow poke tail here. See, look at that. It looks... I guess it looks kind of like hair. I don't think so, though. I'll still always see that as a little nub of a slow poke tail, which we now have. And I don't know what purpose it serves. If anybody knows, comment below, because I'm curious what it would do. If it even powers up slow poke. Who knows, it could actually weaken him because he's depressed about his brethren being chopped up and sold on the black market of Team Rocket. Oh well. Yep, those were the good old days anyway, as I was saying, about ignorance. That being bliss of not knowing how difficult it truly is to program a video game. A lot of people may be listening to this and saying, Hey Dio Gen Z, why do you not become a video game designer instead of a scientist like you're aspiring to be now? Well things change. I'll just say that right off the bat, because who knows if I'm even going to be a scientist, really. Who knows? Life changes all the time. But, <laughs> video game programming is tedious. I actually had an attempt at it back in high school with uh, this thing called the Technology Student Association. There was a challenge to create a video game, and I was put together with a team that, let's just say, was less than desirable. Uh, always constant bickering, Always constant ego battles of this should be in, and I think that, and this and that, and it doesn't even make sense with the whole fluidity of the game. A lot of people wanting their own developer houses in there, just to show that they made it, even though they made it shittily. But that's beside the point. It was an RPG, and I think it was called Arabian Nights, and it worked out pretty well, but it is a lot of work. I was definitely the idea guy when it came to being that team. I didn't do any programming, I just wrote out a lot of ideas for it. See, if I could just acquire that position seamlessly, I wouldn't mind programming video games. I could tell a story for sure, but actually having to punch it out, I was about to say program, but then I switched to punch, punch it out, let's go with that. It's just a little bit too much coding knowledge that I don't have. I don't care that Pokemon are hurt by our experiment. Yeah, obviously. Did you see that outrageous Gyarados in Lake of Rage? Its coloration didn't even change. Scientist Mitch. <laughs> More like scientist bitch. Hurting innocent Pokemon. Ditto, come back to me. I don't think Ditto would really care if it was being used. Obviously, it's the breeding whore of the second gen and then generations onwards. We'll have sex with anything. See, look, it's getting ready to make babies with Pichu. Ay ya! Everybody thought Transform was just an attack move. Ho oh, ho no! That's Ditto getting ready for sexy time. If you look at Ditto's face before it, it transforms, I was about to say evolves. That, that'd be really funny if Ditto evolved into, like, a larger Ditto. But before it transforms, you see the look on its face? It's so plain and... Dopey. It's even dopier than Slowpoke's look. It's just like, mm. flat smile, not even a smile, just flat face, two dots for eyes. Does it even have a mind? I don't know. It doesn't really seem to care that it's being owned by Team Rocket. Then again, which Pokemon have the choice for that? Because if they're already captured, all Team Rocket has to do really is just go, return! And eventually that Raticate becomes pissed off and wants to gnaw through any Pokemon it comes encounter into encounter with, like my Pichu. And then it quick attacks like a duck because it can't run away from Team Rocket. So maybe that's why Team Rocket's Pokemon are so fierce. And if you check on the card series, they actually had a Team Rocket booster set that had Dark types in there. And it wasn't a new type like Dark type as you know it today, like Sneasel is a Dark slash Ice type. But Dark Pokemon, like Dark Pichu, Dark Raticate, those were in that booster series, and it was really cool. But that's why they turned dark. 
They couldn't escape from Team Rocket, and I'm sure they've tried. Very desperately so, Raticates and Rattatas and Zubats, fluttering and scampering away, are at least trying, only to be revoked at the last minute of escape by a return of a Pokeball. Really, I guess if you think about it, for Pokemon, the Pokeball is the greatest symbol of oppression. Because after that, they have no choice in the matter of what they do. Fight this! Do that! Dance on stage! I don't care how boring it is, you're gonna do it! <laughs> Reference to the musical in 5th gen. <laughs> but, um, I think there was an item around here. Hidden item. Thought there was. Eh, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of another... I don't know why I'd be thinking of Sprout Tower, but I thought... Yeah, actually, I am thinking of Sprout Tower now that I, I reel back my memory. There was a spot over there, a little divot that contained some hidden item. I think it was, like, Super Repel? Don't know. And we don't care about that guy's battle. It was boring. It had Rattatas, Drowsies, bleh. The typical same shit. Alright, TM46, we are about to encounter the main head honcho who has the passwords kept in that room there. So I'll see you next time.